Now, joining me, Talking Pints, is Ken Livingston. And before the camera turns to him, I promise you, there has not been a scuffle in the corridor. We have not had a punch-up. But, Ken, <laughs> thanks for joining me. You've been in the wars a little bit. Well, yes, on, on Saturday, I stepped over the dog. She was sleeping in the corridor. And she jumped up, and that knocked me over. So, I, I, I mean, I, I felt like I might claim Boris Johnson had punched me. But it wouldn't be true. <laughs> anyway, cheers and welcome to Talking Pies. Ken, a long career. In politics. Since 1969, I've joined the party. Long career, controversial career. Really? <laughs> I heard you speak when I think I was 18. <laughs> it would have been 1982. You'd taken over as leader of the GLC yep. the previous year. You came to my school in South London and spoke. <laughs> I remember, I've never told you that before, but I remember it very, very well. It clearly didn't encourage you to join the Labour Party. No, I think you've <laughs> sent me the other way, really. Um, what was interesting about all of that period is we now talk a lot about identity politics. Mm. But in a sense, you guys invented this 40 years ago, didn't you? Well, that wasn't what I... When I came into politics, whether it was... I, and I followed John Major onto Lambeth Council. He became mm -hmm. Tory Prime Minister. But everyone came into politics to do things for their local community, build more council housing, improve schools and all of that. But now you're right, it's an awful lot of people want to be a celebrity and all that. I mean, and for me, the defining point was on the day I became the leader of the GLC, Thatcher made a speech to the Scottish Conservatives saying... My plan was to impose on Britain a communist tyranny like Eastern Europe. Now, until she made that speech, no one knew my name. Then suddenly all the Tory press... So she did you a huge favour. <laughs> well, she created me, yeah. And then, in a sense, I was revived by Tony Blair. He's always attempt to stop me becoming mayor. Well, that, we're going to come to that, because yeah. that actually was very, very funny. <laughs> but come on, Ken, let's be honest about it. You know, <clears throat> you had, at the time, on the GLC, mm. and in particular, mm. in councils like Lambeth... Yeah. You know, Red Ted Knight, Linda Bellos. I mean, this was pretty hard left stuff, wasn't it? Well, not really. I mean, <laughs> if you look back, I got elected to be the GLC leader to cut the fares, to build more council housing. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, I've never read Marx, you know. I came into politics to do things. Um, but I was immediately demonised as this mad trot. Whether you were the mad trot or not, the point I'm making is the Labour Party in London had plenty of mad trots, didn't well, they? We, well, don't get we would had the Wilson government of the 1960s, uh -huh. which had actually really failed to deliver on all its promises. And so when that was defeated, there was a surge of new, mainly young people coming in, wanted to get a better Labour Party. And a lot of them were on, you know, a, a, a small minority were trots, yeah. Most were broadly on the left, um, but there were some on the right. But it turns out now, that, I mean, and Lambeth was the most controversial of all, mm. you know, these, yeah. these, these really quite bellicose figures, uh, and they were pretty hard left. And now it turns out, with all these dramatic rows that were going on at the town hall, that actually, you know, in one of the care homes in Lambeth, there was sexual abuse on a horrendous scale going on. I know. I've been really shocked watching... I, the news about all of this, because I was on Lambeth Council from 71 to 78. In all that time, no one ever said anything about abuse in our care homes. But then I was on the Housing Committee, not the Social Services Committee. Um, and I look back on that and I think, you know, if Ted Knight, who then became the, the yeah. Labour leader, yeah. had heard about that, he would have clamped down on it and dealt with it. I think it was just that a lot of people working for the council, may have known some of this was going on, but they never came and told the councillors. Well, it's a pretty shocking failure, yeah. at whatever level, yeah. uh, and, and, and the numbers involved are quite remarkable. So the GLC, you were the boss of the GLC, you became leader of it in slightly controversial circumstances, <laughs> um, and Margaret Thatcher abolished it. Mm. And, OK, we had a, a few years without it, but then it comes back mm. as the London Assembly with the London Mayor, yeah. you run... And you win in 2000, I, not surprisingly. Mm. You know, I, I thought you'd win in 2000, mm. and, and you're a London figure. And, and Labour does have some... I mean, Boris did well, but Labour does have some advantages in London. Mm. But 2004 was remarkable. I mean, you'd had this massive fallout with, with Blair, basically, mm. hadn't you? Well, 
I disagreed. He got involved in America's wars in the Middle East. It's always been a disaster. We should never get involved in, in those wars. And actually, they've never been really about trying to create some nice democracy. It's about controlling the oil resources there. It's, you know, it's not been about doing stuff for the local people. So we had many disagreements. But the thing that appalled me the most about Blair, I mean, just a few weeks after he became prime minister, he passed a law that had been drawn up by the Tories that cut benefits for single mums. And I remember on that night, about 40 of us Labour MPs voted against that. Mm -hmm. I, but I remember many other Labour MPs, as they came through the, the division lobby, there were tears coming down their face because they were appalled at what they've had to do. But they knew if they didn't do it, they might not get a job in Blair's and, government. And that's how the whip system works. Yeah, and how, yeah I know. It's, I'm afraid it's a Oddly enough, I never got a job from Blair. No, no well, I didn't <laughs> think you would somehow. But So in 2004, you run again as London mm -hmm. Mayor, but without the Labour Party supporting you? Oh, no, they did. Basically, after, after I became mayor, I met Blair. We had an amiable chat and so on. But I wasn't brought back into the party until after the congestion charge, because everyone assumed the congestion charge was going to be a disaster. Um, well, and <laughs> if you're a self-employed van driver, it is a disaster, <laughs> Ken, isn't it? But it, I mean, immediately congestion went down massively. Air pollution but went what, down 12%. But what but, about the self-employed? What about the people going about their business. Yeah, but basically you can't just have a clogged up central London. It was disastrous. And basically, in you know, the eight years Boris Johnson was mayor, 76,000 Londoners died because of the air quality. And one of the things I started to do when I was mayor was introduce you know, attempts to crack down on the most polluting vehicles and things like that. But that's, you know, that, that, that's the real key to all of this. If you've got a city that's completely clogged up at the centre, it, it, it doesn't really work. You want everybody possible to use public transport. Only drive if you have to. Uh, if you're you know, a social worker has got to be going around visiting lots of people and so on, yeah, you, you need to have a car and drive. Or a taxi driver. Or a taxi driver. Or a van. Oh, yeah. and, and as you know, I mean, now, there are, oh, it seems to be more vans than cars on the road <laughs> with all these home deliveries and, and all the rest of it. So you approve of the cycle lanes? Pardon? Do you approve of the cycle lanes in London? Oh, yeah, I, I, I st I'd done the work preparing for that. Um, but then I, I lost to Boris just before we were going to introduce it, and he called it well, Boris Bikes, wasn't whatever it was. Um, and I didn't get the credit for it. So 2008, <clears throat> you've done one long stint as leader of the GLC, you've done a long stint as Mayor of London. What was your biggest failure? I, I think basically my biggest failure was not to go into the Labour Party much younger. I didn't join until I was 23. I was spending my life breeding frogs and toads and working with <laughs> London. Newts, to, newts, newts said. and newts, yeah. What uh, on earth got you into that? Well, you know, I grew up in that post-war world where, I mean, the thing that really changed that, I was born in 1945, so we got TV when I was 10, and there's David Attenborough doing all these animal programs. He's still, he's still on them. I know, I know. Still doing it. But then, I mean, my ambition was no politics. I, I wanted a job at London Zoo, but when I left school, they didn't have a vacancy. <laughs> but literally, if I'd got a job at London Zoo, I must have never gone into politics. I would have been so besotted with working mm. with all those animals. I loved it. But you got into part, you mm. got into, you did these two big stints. What was the one thing you really regret doing? I. I don't, I, I don't think there's anything I, mean, I, I regret doing. I mean, I, I've always been controversial, a bit like you, because like you, I always say what I believe. Mm. You can't say that about most politicians. No, please, no, please. that's true. We've got that in common. And of yeah. course, 40 years ago when I became leader of the Jersey, to come out and support lesbian and gay rights, it's inconceivable. I mean, to support women's rights, challenge racism, all those things, I mean, that was considered all over the place. Yeah, and perhaps a bit, little bit too friendly for But then some. now, they've all become the norm. But a lot of Labour MPs were saying, this is, we shouldn't be doing with all of this, we just focus on class issues, you know. Yeah, you, I mean, as I say, that was the beginning of identity politics, and yeah. it has become mainstream, and you were there. Um, I mean, similarly, there were many that felt you were far too close to the Irish Republican movement. Well, I mean, every year, uh, at least once, sometimes twice, the IRA would set off a bomb in London. And you know, Thatcher's line then as Prime Minister was, these are just criminals and psychopaths, we'll never talk to them. And I knew we've got to negotiate and get a deal to stop the bombing. And I invited Jerry Adams 
to come to London. Thatcher banned him from coming, so I flew out there. And virtually the first thing he said is, we know this can't go on, we, we're ready to negotiate a deal. But Thatcher wouldn't do that, and we had in another decade, I think another, I don't know how many thousand more people died. Um, and we could have done that deal, I mean, you don't get for all my criticism of Tony Blair, the moment he became Prime Minister, he started talking to the IRA, the violence was all over within a few weeks. Yeah, I mean, it came at a hell of a price, though. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of convicted murderers being let out um, mm. of prison, and, and, and it wasn't straightforward. Ken, the 2012 Olympics was, was, was a great moment for mm. London, wasn't it? I mean, it really was a big success. Oh, mm. There were lots of Olympic sceptics, and I must admit, in the early days, I was one of them. I wasn't so <laughs> sure. No, I, was, I, I wasn't sure it was going to work. Um, I mean, that was an amazing achievement. And, and kind of, <clears throat> you must have felt slightly, I won't say bitter, but you must have felt slightly jealous that Boris was able to bask in all of that, well, because... You mean, see, I only bid for the Olympic Games to transform the East End of London, because it was derelict, polluted. Um, and oddly enough, I mean, back in 1980, the Tory leader of the GLC, Horace Cutler, yeah. he bid for the... Um, uh, to do the Olympic Games for exactly the same reason. And, I mean, if you look, m most Olympic Games cost a, a country an awful lot of money. Mm. Eh? And so I think the only reason for staging an Olympics is to transform some run-down old area so there's a real legacy. And that's still going on, still new homes being built, new jobs being created. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't about sport. I, it was about transforming the East End. And after... After being mayor of London, you did a radio show with David Mellor, mm -hmm. which was very successful. I used to come and appear <laughs> on that programme quite regularly with you. And then your whole sort of career in politics ends in quite bizarre circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, 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 Ken, let's be frank, mm -hmm. you know, some pretty heavy charges of anti-Semitism. I mean, you, who'd always well, been the great anti-racist campaigner, yeah, but and, and, yet, and yet, come on, Ken, for a man of your experience and wisdom... You know, quoting Hitler in anything isn't very helpful, is it? I didn't quote Hitler. I simply pointed out that in the summer of 1933, um, the Nazi government and the German uh, Zionist movement did a deal, and they migrated 60,000 of Germany's Jews to what's now Israel. And if they hadn't done that deal, those 60,000 would have followed the 6 million into the gas chambers. And so, although they loathed each other, it was a deal that saved the lives of 60,000 Jews, and their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren are still living in Israel today. And yet, the charges against you of anti-Semitism, oh, yeah. of, of being beyond the pale... I mean, it was an error of judgment, wasn't it? You actually look, in the eight years I was mayor of London, anti-Semitic incidents recorded by the Metropolitan Police went down by 50%. Mm. Boris Johnson's eight years, they doubled. Now, not because he's anti-Semitic, but no. he didn't do the bloody job. No, no he isn't. No, he isn't. There's, there's no way we're going to have Boris <laughs> called that. <laughs> You look at the Labour Party today, Ken, <clears throat> you know, you've been in and out of the Labour Party more than once over the years, but the Labour Party, the socialist movement, is in your heart. I know it is, and I know you believe in these things very strongly. Um, and, 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 you know, that's where, as I say, you and I have that in common. <laughs> where do you see Brexit? I mean, are you, is Brexit now finished for you as an issue? Is it done? Are we moving on? Well, I don't think we'll ever have a vote to go back in. No. And we, we've now got, you know, government finally getting around to trying to tackle the problems of all of that. Um, it's clearly cost a lot of jobs, and we've got to have a... a has a, it? Has it really? Oh, yeah, it has. But, a billion going but, into Sunderland, it, and you're yes, still a Ramona, aren't you? But you, you are in a position where you've now got to draw up a proper economic strategy for Britain outside the EU mm -hmm. and create new jobs, in, get more investment. The, the biggest cause of success in an economy is investment. And our investment is well below what it should be. I mean, if you actually look, um, the, the level of investment I mean, in the Great Depression in America in the, the 1930s, is, yeah. Roosevelt wins massive increase in investment. Mm. You look at the Attlee government in 1945, big increase in investment. I mean, and, you know, 12 years, 17 years later when I left school, every kid got a job. Yeah. That didn't mean unemployed person. Well, whether we can, how, much, how much we can invest with two trillion of debt at the moment <clears throat> is a good question. But, Ken, finally, I must ask you, is, is life now, is it happy, contented retirement? Are you still beavering away? Oh, no, I'd still rather be mayor.
<laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, that was Ken Livingston. And whatever you think, whatever you've thought about Ken Livingston over the years, the one refreshing thing is he does actually say what he means and he believes it.